Here it is, the top 30 unknown features on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. What's up guys, I'm Eric from Techisode TV and I focus on diving deep into what the latest tech has to offer. And if you guys like deep dives like this, consider subscribing and turning on the notification bell so you don't miss out. And one last thing, as always, I do have video time codes down in the description so you guys can quickly jump around to find the features you care most about. And if you guys appreciate video time codes, let me know by dropping a like down below. All right, let's get started. If you want your phone to run even faster with your favorite applications, you can do that by locking those applications so they never get cleared out of RAM. To do that, just open up your recent applications, tap the app icon, then tap keep open. That'll add a little lock icon here, and that'll prevent this app from closing even if it's been in the background for an extended period of time. This is an excellent feature if there's a few apps that you use all the time, like let's say it's your messages app, maybe some social media applications, YouTube, and maybe Spotify or some other music application. You can keep all of those open all the time so they always open instantly. You can do this with up to five applications on the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but that number may be lower with lower tier devices. I don't have a Galaxy S21 or S21 Plus to test that with, but if you do, let us know down in the comments below if you can also lock up to five applications on your device. And if you want to unlock an application, all you have to do is tap this lock icon and it unlocks. This next feature is one of the most powerful features available on pretty much any Samsung device, and that feature is called GoodLock. This is actually an application that was produced by Samsung, and it has a ton of different plugins to really unlock the full potential of your device. This application is so powerful that I have two dedicated videos just for this application. And in those videos, I cover literally every single feature available for all of the plugins. And I highly recommend checking those out to unlock better multi-window functionality, put your keyboard on steroids, get customizable S Pen features if you decided to get the S Pen with your S21 Ultra, unlock a ton of home screen and navigation theming and customization options, and so much more. If you want to check those videos out, you can click the link that's popping out above or the link in the description. If you're new to Samsung devices and using multiple apps at the same time, you may figure out that you can drag this bar around to resize the applications, but if you tap the bar, you also get the option to add both of these applications as an app pair to your edge panel. So now if I swipe into my apps edge panel and scroll down to the bottom, you'll see that I now have a YouTube and Twitter app pair. So now if I didn't have those applications open and I wanna just quickly jump into that pair, I can just tap this icon here and both of them open right up in that same orientation. Speaking of the Apps Edge, there's another feature that's been around for a while, but it's still something that a lot of people don't know about. If instead of just tapping to open an application, you long press, then drag that application to the center and let go, you'll open it up in a pop-up view. This pop-up view can be moved around and resized however you'd like. And if you tap this blue bar at the top and then tap these two boxes, you can even change the transparency, which is especially useful for something like a calculator if you're trying to do some quick math on something behind this application. This pop-up window can also be minimized into these little floating icons, and this works just like the Facebook Messenger icon. It stays on your screen, and even if you go into another application, it still stays there, and you can just tap it and open it anytime you'd like. And if you ever want to take it full screen, just tap the bar again and tap the expand icon, and now you've got the app in full screen. Another quick way to open up an application in the pop-up view is to simply go to your recent applications, long press the application, and then just let go when it's in the center. If you already have an application open, then go back into your Apps Edge panel, then long press an application and drag it not towards the center, but towards the top or the bottom, you can quickly open up both applications in split screen view. And the last thing I wanna point out about this Edge panel is that you have this icon here at the bottom, which looks like a grid. If you tap this, it'll show you all of your applications. And from here, you can grab literally any application you have installed, long press, and drag that to either the top or bottom to open that application in split screen view. And if you're wondering why the blue light filter turned on automatically when I opened up this application, then turns off automatically when I close that application, I'll get to that a little bit later in this video. If you're someone who gets easily distracted by your phone and it really ruins your productivity, then you can enable something called focus mode by pulling your notification shade down twice and scrolling over until you find the focus mode toggle. If you don't see it here, try tapping the plus icon at the very end and see if it's up in this area here. 
When you tap the focus mode toggle, you get the option to enable either work time, me time, or any other focus mode that you set up. For now, we'll just use work time and tap start. What this will do is automatically disable all of my applications, except for some applications that I have whitelisted. So I can use my phone, messages, and listen to music, but I can't use any of these applications that are grayed out. And if I try to open one of these, it'll tell me that it's blocked during focus mode, and that the only way to open it is to turn off focus mode. And even if I go into my app drawer, you'll see that all of those applications are grayed out as well. So this is a great way to stay productive without having to put on do not disturb mode and miss important phone calls or text messages. If I go back to the toggle and tap it again, it'll disable focus mode. Now, if I go back to that toggle a third time and tap the text instead, then tap details, I can edit the different focus modes. So if I tap digital well-being and scroll down, you'll see my focus modes right here. So you see that there's already two set up. If I tap add, then give it a name, then I can tap edit, and add any applications I want to be available during this mode. Once I've selected all of my whitelisted applications, I can then set a duration for the focus mode. So I can have it stay on until I turn it off, or I can set a time limit that goes all the way down to just 15 minutes, or all the way up to 12 hours. Then once I hit this time limit, focus mode will automatically turn back off. And in case you're wondering, you are limited to just three focus modes. A moment ago, you saw me tap just the text to go into the settings for focus mode, but that's true for any of these toggles. So if I wanted to go into my sound and volume control, I could just tap the word vibrate, and that brings up all of the controls right here. And if I tap the text under the Bluetooth icon, I can quickly see all of my Bluetooth devices, and so on. Many of you know about wireless DeX, which turns your S21 Ultra into a full-blown desktop computer using any TV or monitor with Miracast support but you probably didn't know that DeX can also be controlled with some TV remotes, complete with pointer and clicking functionality. And in case you're wondering, this TV is the LG G10, and I highly recommend it. I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in checking it out. And speaking of wireless DeX, since wireless DeX requires Miracast technology, a Chromecast won't work with wireless DeX. However, Microsoft makes a Miracast adapter, which works perfectly for any TV or monitor that doesn't support Miracast. All you have to do is plug the HDMI end into an available HDMI port and plug the USB end into an open USB port for power. After that, just start wireless DeX from your phone and select the Microsoft adapter in the pop-up. If you also happen to own a Galaxy Tab S7, S7 Plus, or newer, then you can unlock another awesome feature on the Galaxy S21 Ultra. All you have to do is go to the quick toggles on the S21 Ultra, either by pulling down the notification shade twice or pulling down once with two fingers and swiping over until you see something called call and text on other devices. Go ahead and enable this toggle and go through the setup process and that will allow you to get calls and texts on your Galaxy Tab S7 or S7 Plus. To finish setting it up, you do have to do the same thing on the Tab S7 Plus. So if I swipe over here, you'll see that it's connected to my S21 Ultra. So now anytime I get either a call or a text, it's also going to go to this tablet. And this is especially useful if I'm texting a lot of people back and forth because I can just attach my Samsung keyboard and type a lot faster than I can on just my S21 Ultra. This is also really useful if I'm just web browsing on my Tab S7 Plus, then I get a call or a text, I can just handle it on the tablet instead of going to find my phone. Another awesome feature that's unlocked when you have a Tab S7 or S7 Plus is the ability to continue using applications from one device to the other. So if I go to my settings on my Galaxy S21 Ultra and scroll down to advanced features and tap that, then I can enable this option called continue apps on other devices. And if I tap this, I get a bit more information about it. As you can see, it works with both Samsung Internet and Samsung Notes. So let me give you guys a quick example of how powerful this is. So here I am on my S21 Ultra looking up some rumors on the new iPad Pro. If I want to transfer this web page to my Tab S7 Plus, all I have to do is go to my recent apps on the Tab S7 Plus and tap this little icon right here. It'll open up my internet browser and open up that same tab on this device. And this works both ways. So if I was looking at Best Buy on my tablet and wanted to switch that to my phone, all I'd have to do is go to the recent apps on my phone and tap the same icon here. That'll go back in the internet browser and open up that same Best Buy tab. This feature also goes beyond just the Samsung internet browser and Samsung Notes, and it allows you to copy pretty much anything from one device 
to another just using the built-in copy and paste features. So here I am again on the Best Buy website looking at this LG TV. And if I wanna copy this link into this text, all I have to do is tap the link, tap copy, and you'll see just that fast, the link got copied over to my phone. Now I just tap here and boom, that link went from my tablet to my phone in less than a second. And if instead I wanted to copy an image, it works just as easy. Just long press the image, tap copy image, wait a couple seconds, then it'll appear right here, tap paste, and now I've just added an image to the message. So if you're someone who frequently uses your Tab S7 or S7 Plus, this is an incredible feature that you've got to turn on right away. The Samsung internet application has its own unknown features. One of the most useful is that if you swipe across the bar on the bottom, you can actually scroll back and forth between all of your tabs. And this also works if you swipe across the top as well. Another cool feature in Samsung internet is that if you go to all of your tabs, then long press one of them, you get an option to lock individual tabs. And once a tab is locked, you won't be able to accidentally close it. And in case you're wondering, you can lock more than one tab. I've personally locked at least 11 tabs and still couldn't find a limit. Then when you want to unlock a tab, you just tap the lock icon again. And one more cool feature with the tabs is that you can reorder them if you'd like. Just long press and then drag these little handles on the right and you can move it up and down to wherever you'd like. While we're talking about the Samsung internet browser, another cool feature is that when you take a screenshot of a web page, it'll actually save a link to that web page with the screenshot. So if I go ahead and take a screenshot right here, then go to the screenshot, you'll see at the bottom, there's a link to go to the website. If I tap that, it'll take me right to that web page. I also tested this with Google Chrome and it does work there, but it doesn't work with other browsers like the Microsoft Edge browser. And while we're talking about screenshots, I do want to throw a bonus feature in here. This has been around for a long time, but there's still some people who just don't know about it. So if you want to take a longer screenshot and capture more of a page, all you have to do is just start a screenshot, then tap this down arrow right here, and it will scroll down and take more of a screenshot. So if you want to take a bigger screenshot, that's how you do it. And Samsung has also added this hashtag feature here. If I tap this, it'll let me add a tag to that screenshot. So there's a bunch of suggestions based on what's in the screenshot, or you can create your own custom tag. This is especially useful for being able to quickly organize your photos. So let's say you're doing some Christmas shopping. You can have a tag called Christmas and add that tag to anything that's Christmas related. Or if you're shopping for furniture, you can have a tag called furniture or be even more specific and call it like sofas or tables or whatever it is that you're looking for. So later on, when you go back through your photos and you wanna find all the photos that are related to that particular tag, you just have to search for that tag and you'll quickly find all of those photos. The S21 Ultra has ultra wideband technology so you can quickly find other devices with the same technology. It can even use your camera with an augmented reality overlay to guide you right to where the device is and highlight the device once it's found, even if the device can't be seen by the camera. There's a feature called Nearby Share, which lets you instantly share files with nearby Android devices. And when you aim your phone at a Samsung device that also happens to have the ultra wideband technology, it will highlight that device in your menu so you'll know exactly who you're sharing to. If you have friends or family over and they wanna get on your Wi-Fi network, but you either have a super long password that you don't remember, or you just don't feel comfortable typing in the password on the phone, you can actually get them on your Wi-Fi network using a QR code. To do that, pull down the notification shade twice with one finger, or pull down once with two fingers, then tap the text under the Wi-Fi toggle, tap details, tap the settings gear next to the Wi-Fi network you're currently connected to, then tap QR code here at the bottom. Now all you have to do is have your friend open up their camera app, aim it at your QR code, tap the notification that pops up, tap join, and they'll jump right onto your Wi-Fi network. And in case you're wondering, this does work with all iOS and Android devices. And just to be clear, you can scan any type of QR code with this. So here I have a different QR code that takes you to a website. And if I bring the camera over to that, you'll see that it scans it and I get the option to go straight to the website. While we're talking about the camera, let's go ahead and talk about some unknown camera features. So the first one is that when you bring your phone close to an object, this little icon will appear in the bottom corner. If you tap this icon, it's going to turn on an enhanced focus mode, which allows you to get incredible macro shots. You can get 
unbelievably close to objects to take pictures of them when you turn this mode on. And that makes this phone the best phone I have ever used for macro photos by a massive margin. Way better than the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, way better than even the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I've never used a phone that takes macro photos as good as the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Another unknown camera feature that's great for taking group selfies is the ability to move the shutter button anywhere you'd like on the screen. To do that, all you have to do is just grab the shutter button and drag it where you want to put it. Now if you're going to take a group selfie, it's a lot easier to hold the phone in one hand and hit that button. Then when you're done, just drag the button back down and it disappears. And speaking of dragging down, if you drag the shutter button down, you'll start taking burst photos. If you're taking pictures of your friends, family, or your kids, then something really funny starts happening and you want to start filming immediately, you don't have to switch to video mode and then tap the record button. Instead, you can go ahead and just hold the shutter button and you'll start recording immediately. The one caveat with this is you will be limited to 1920 by 1080 p resolution and it's going to give you the same crop factor that you get with a photo. Once you're done recording, just let go of the shutter button and the recording saves. One of the other benefits to recording videos like this is that it allows you to record at the max zoom of 100 times. So if I went to 100 times zoom, then change my aspect ratio to 16 by 9 to match a normal video, then hold the shutter button, I will now be recording at that full 100 times zoom. If I were to switch to video mode, I'd be limited to a max zoom of 20 times. If you switch to night mode and you hold the phone very steady, you can get up to a 6 second exposure for your nighttime photo. But if you want to capture even more light, you can tap the word auto, then this new word pops up called max, tap that, and this will let you go all the way up to 14 seconds. And that will make a pretty big difference if you're taking some nighttime scenery photos. Here's a nighttime photo on auto mode, and here's the same picture with the max setting. And for reference, here's how dark the scene was in person. So as you can see, Samsung's done an excellent job with their night mode. If you're on your lock screen and you tap the clock, you can see a bunch of widgets that let you do a bunch of different things. You've got music control, you can see your next alarm, see the weather, take a look at your day's schedule, and even see your Bixby routines. And if you tap settings at the bottom and unlock your phone, it'll take you straight to the settings for these widgets and you can customize which ones are enabled. As you can see, I don't have digital well-being enabled, so I can go ahead and tap this and enable this one. And I can also reorder these by tapping the reorder button in the top corner and dragging these little arrows. Now if I go back to my lock screen and tap the time again, you'll see that digital well-being is up on top. And if I tap one of these and unlock my phone again, it'll take me straight into the relevant application. This feature also works on your always on display. So if I tap the time here, then swipe up or down, I can see all of those same widgets and I have all of the same controls as well. If I double tap the time and don't swipe up or down, I get these other two options. If I tap the one on the right, I can change the brightness of the always on display. And if I tap the one on the left, then unlock my phone, it'll take me right into the always on display settings. And in case you're wondering, double tapping anywhere else will just take you to your lock screen. If you've ever accidentally cleared all of your notifications in one shot and forgot to read a couple of them and wanted to see what those notifications were, then this next feature is definitely something you'll want to enable. So if you pull down your notification shade and tap the settings gear, then go to the notification settings, then scroll to the bottom and tap advanced settings, then tap notification history, then tap this toggle to enable it. I've already enabled it, so I can just scroll through and see all of my recent notifications. And if you tap the down arrow, you can see the exact notifications you received from that application. If you want to quickly switch back and forth between two different applications, you can do that by simply double tapping the recent apps button. And that'll switch back and forth between your two most recent applications. If you swipe down on the notification shade, then tap devices, you can see all of your smart things connected devices and control any of them. Now this has been here for a long time, but something that's new is the option to switch from smart things to Google Home. And this will just show you all of your Google Home devices. If you tap these three dots in the corner, you get the option to manage apps, and you can turn either one of these on or off. If you tap one of the items themselves, you can see all the available items from that app. So as you can see, I only have a few lights selected, but if I wanted to, I could select more lights, my smart plugs, or anything else I have connected. And the same goes for smart things. So if there's a bunch of things that I don't want to see, I can just deselect things that I don't use. And if I go back and tap these three dots again and tap settings, I have the option to use all these devices even if my phone is locked. So what that means is now from my lock screen, I can swipe down to see my notification shade, tap devices, and still have control of all of these. But if I want to change any settings, I will have to unlock the phone.
If you have small hands and want to make it easier to use your Galaxy S21 Ultra with one hand, then you want to enable one-handed mode, which lets you shrink everything down just by double tapping the home button. And this shrinks the entire interface. So it doesn't matter if you're looking in your app drawer or if you're in one of your applications, it's all going to stay in this tiny window. And this window is also resizable to make it even easier to use. If you're left-handed, just tap this arrow and it'll switch to the left side. And if you don't want to have the window go all the way to the bottom, you can do that too just by dragging it up. When you want to close out of this mode, you can either double tap the home button again or tap anywhere outside of the window. And as you can see, it remembers the last position it was in, so you only have to set the position one time. To enable this feature, pull down your notification shade and go to the settings, then scroll down to advanced features, then tap one-handed mode and enable this feature. If you don't want to double tap the button and instead use a gesture, you can do that by just tapping gesture. Now, when you swipe down on the home button, it'll do the same thing. If you're coming to the Galaxy S21 Ultra from an iPhone, but you prefer iPhone style navigation, you can actually enable that on the S21 Ultra. To do that, just pull your notification shade down and go to your settings, then tap display, then scroll down to the navigation bar option and tap that. Now just switch to swipe gestures. This will give you iPhone-like control. So if you want to go home, you just swipe up from the bottom. If you want to open up your recent apps, you swipe up for a second and hold, and you get all of your recent applications. If you want to go back, you just swipe in from the left or right side, and that'll take you back. And one big difference with the back gesture on the S21 Ultra compared to the iPhone is that on the S21 Ultra, that gesture works for any application, whereas on the iPhone, it only works for applications that have it enabled. And the other big difference with the back gesture, as you guys just saw, is it works from not just the left side, but also the right side. So if you're using the phone one-handed, you can always use the back gesture. Another gesture that's carried over from the iPhone is the ability to just swipe across the bottom to swap between your applications. And if you tap more options, you'll see that you can have two different types of swipe options. This top option gives you three designated swipe areas, and you'll see these three bars here on the bottom. So if you swipe up from the center, that'll take you home. Swipe up from the left, that'll open up your recent apps. And swipe up from the right, and that'll take you back. If you switch back to the iPhone style gesture navigation, you also get this other option here called gesture sensitivity, and this is specific to the back button. So if I turn this all the way up, you'll see these blue bars get much larger, and this means that it's going to be a lot easier to activate the back button. I personally don't recommend turning it up this high because you may accidentally activate the back button when you're just trying to swipe around your screen. So I personally keep mine at the second lowest setting. Another gesture to be aware of when you're using iPhone style navigation is the gesture to open up Google Assistant. To do that, just swipe up and in from any one of the bottom corners. And hold for a second, and there I've activated Google Assistant. And in terms of using one-handed mode, since there's no button to double tap down here, you do just have to do a small swipe down to activate one-handed mode. And one more detail I want to point out really quick when it comes to the navigation bars is that if I switch back to the button style navigation, there is an option to move the back button to the left side if you prefer it over there instead of the right side, which is what the default is on a Samsung device. You can enable link to Windows, which lets you open up any one of your phone apps right on your computer. You can also copy photos from your S21 directly to your computer or from your computer directly to your S21. You can even directly attach photos from your computer when sending texts or emails. And if that wasn't enough, you can even mirror your phone's screen on the computer so you can control literally everything on your phone wirelessly. To enable this, just pull down the notification shade twice to reveal all of your quick toggles and find the quick toggle called Link to Windows, then tap to enable. Now just follow the prompts and you'll be all set up. The only caveat here is it only works with Windows 10 computers and pretty much everything except for sending and receiving texts requires both phones to be on the same Wi-Fi network. If you have an S Pen for your S21 Ultra, then you're really going to like this next feature. If I go ahead and tap on a photo, then tap Edit, then scroll up until I get to the Writing tool, then tap the Pen tool, you'll see that there's a little wand here. And if I tap this, it'll enable something called Auto Doodle, which is a lot of fun to use. All I have to do now is start drawing anything I want. So let's start with something simple like a smiley face. So I drew the smiley face, and as you can see here, there's a bunch of smiley face suggestions. So if I tap this one, it changes my smiley face to the one I selected. And I can then move that smiley face around. I can go ahead and grab the corners and rotate and scale, and then tap the check mark when I'm done, and there is my smiley face, which is awesome for me because I am terrible at drawing. To really drive the point home, let's try to draw something a lot more complicated. For this, let's try and draw a dragon. So we've got a little dragon nose here, and like there's a dragon face, and the dragon back, and this is his tail. 
kind of coming around and a little pointy tail maybe and then like here's here's one dragon foot and this is really <laughs> this is so bad uh and then here's the the rest of the mouth and he's breathing fire maybe and like he's got an eye and he's got some wings how about that ah <laughs> look at that <laughs> got it <laughs> that's just crazy i mean you guys saw how bad that drawing was and it, it actually got it so here's my dragon that is so cool i didn't think it would actually get that bad of a drawing but it did so as you can see this tool is really powerful so if you like doodling or you're just really bad at drawing stuff like i am this is a really good way to feel good at drawing and in case you're wondering, you don't need the S Pen to do this. It just makes it a little bit easier. So if I drop the S Pen, I can go ahead and just tap the check mark there to set the dragon. And I can go ahead and draw that smiley face again over here and select maybe this smiley face instead and move it around to wherever I'd like. And I can even change the colors in real time as well. So let's go ahead and make this blue, tap the check mark. And now I've got that smiley face right there. And since we were just talking about the S Pen, if you guys want to learn a lot more about the S Pen, I highly recommend checking out my dedicated Note 20 Ultra videos where I dive pretty deep into what the S Pen can do. You can check those out by clicking the card that's sliding out above or the link in the description. And in case you're wondering, the auto doodle feature is also available on videos. So if I draw a little smiley face here, we'll go with this more elongated one. Let's go ahead and make it a little bit bigger, drop it there. And let's go ahead and change the line thickness a little bit, drag that down a little bit. That looks good to me, and let's go ahead and set that there. Now, since this isn't a video, if I tap this check mark and then play the video, you'll see that that's drawn in real time with the video. So this really enhances the doodling experience. This next feature is one of the most powerful features available on any Samsung device. And this feature is called Bixby Routines. To get to this, just pull your notification shade down twice to reveal all of your quick toggles, then scroll across until you find a toggle called Bixby Routines, then just tap the text, then tap details. This will take you into the Bixby Routines application where you can really unlock some powerful features. So as you can see, I've already set up six routines just to give you guys a quick example of how powerful this is. The first one is called Battery Lifesaver. And what this does is whenever it's between the times of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., it's gonna turn off fast wireless charging, fast charging, and super fast charging. And the reason for this is that if I'm charging my phone between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., chances are I've left it charging overnight. And if you wanna prolong the life of your battery so you don't have to replace it in a couple years, then you wanna reduce the amount of time you're spending fast charging your device. So this is a great way to do that automatically. And when it's not in this time frame, all of these settings will turn back on so I can get back to fast charging. The next routine is called arriving at work. And whenever I get within a specified radius of where I work, it's going to change all of these settings down here. So it'll change my lock screen settings to my work email and OneNote, which I use a lot for work. It'll set my sound mode to vibrate and set ringtone notifications and system sounds to 0%. It'll turn on ambient sound mode for my Galaxy Buds Pro, just in case someone comes over to talk to me when I'm at work and I have my music playing, I'll still be able to hear them. And it also turns on focus mode, which I showed you guys a little bit earlier. Then when I leave work, it's gonna revert all of these settings back to what they were before I got to work. And in case you guys are wondering, I don't actually live in Florida and I have no idea what's actually at this address. I just picked it for this example. The next routine is called driving and this enables automatically whenever I get in my car and connect to my car's Bluetooth radio. What this will do is set my screen orientation to portrait mode, change my sound mode and volumes. It'll start playing whatever music I had playing last on YouTube music and it'll open up the Waze app for navigation. Then when I get to my destination and get out of my car, it'll change all of these settings back to what they were before I got in the car. Read comfortably, you guys saw in action earlier. Anytime I open up an application where I do a lot of reading in, in this case, the Bible, it's gonna turn on Eye Comfort Shield, which is the blue light filter. Then when I close that application, it'll turn the filter back off. Save battery is a great routine if you often forget to plug your phone in and charge it. So in this case, if the phone isn't charging, and the phone detects that I'm sleeping, it's gonna automatically turn on power saving mode until I wake up and start using the phone again. So this way, if I went to bed and only had 10% of my battery left, it's automatically gonna turn on power saving mode and I won't lose that much battery overnight. The auto rotate routine is excellent for people who read in bed before they go to sleep. If you're browsing the web and you're laying down in bed, if you have auto rotate turned on, chances are your web pages are gonna flip sideways when you don't want them to. What this routine does is it lets you stay in portrait mode unless you open something like Disney Plus or YouTube, in which case it'll let you put it in landscape mode, which is what you're probably going to want to do anyway when you're using those two applications. 
Then when you leave those applications, it'll put you right back into portrait mode. So now that you guys know what Bixby Routines is and why it's so powerful, let me show you guys how to set up a new routine so you can see all the different things you can do with Bixby Routines. So I'm just gonna tap Add Routine at the bottom, and at the top, you have all of your if statements. This is the condition that's going to trigger an event to happen. So if I tap the plus icon here, I'm met with a ton of different options. And I'm not gonna dig into all of these because all of these have their own subcategories when you tap them, and it would make for a really long video if I covered every single one of these. So for now, I'm just gonna select App Opened and pick a random application and tap Done. So now that I have my first trigger, you can see that I can hit the plus icon and add even more triggers. And I wasn't able to find any limit to triggers, so it seems that you can just add as many as you want. And all of these conditions are inclusive. And what I mean by that is all of the events have to occur before anything happens. So in this example, I have to have both Asphalt 9 open and have my battery level drop below 15% before this routine will run. So let's tap the plus icon down here and see what we can do. So as you can see, there's a ton of different options here. And if I tap one of the options, I get a bunch of options within those options as well. And again, I'm not gonna dive super deep into all of these because there's way too much to cover in this video. But if you guys do want me to do a separate video where I dive into every single one of these categories, let me know down in the comments below. The one category that I do wanna touch on is this one called Bixby Voice. So as you can tell already, there's a ton of different things you can do just in all of these other categories. But if for some reason there is something that's not available, but you still wanna do it with your phone, you can using something called Bixby Voice. And within this group is something called Run Quick Command. And if you're not familiar with Quick Commands, this lets you run any custom function on your phone using Bixby. So if I tap this, we can see the available Quick Commands that I have. So an example of a unique thing you can do with a Quick Command is open up the calculator in split screen view with whatever application is currently open on your phone. That's not a function that'll be available on that main functions page that I showed you guys earlier, but you can do it using these quick commands. And the last function I wanted to point out here is the SmartThings function, which lets you control any device that you have connected to SmartThings. And you can even run any scenes you have set with SmartThings based on the conditions that you set for this routine. If I back out to the main Bixby Routines page, you can see over here in the corner that there's a tab called Discover. If I tap that, I'll get a bunch of suggestions for routines based on how I use my phone. So if you're new to Bixby Routines and you're not really sure what to do, I highly recommend going to the Discover tab because you'll get some great ideas right here. And real quick, if you guys are getting value out of this video, let me know by dropping a like down below. If you wanna share a large file, like maybe a 4K video with somebody, but you don't want it to get compressed, you can use link sharing. To do that, tap the share icon and scroll down until you find link sharing. Then just tap that. Now that image or video is gonna be uploaded to a private cloud, and all you have to do now is tap copy and paste it into the messaging application. If you wanna send something privately, like if you need to send your spouse either credit card information or maybe account information, you can do that as well. Just tap the share icon, then scroll down until you find private share. Then just tap that. Select the contact that you wanna share privately to, then tap send. And sending images or videos this way sends it privately, it prevents the recipient from resharing it, and you can also set expiration dates on the files. Once you tap send, you'll get three options. You can either send it through text, you can show them a QR code, or you can send it with a third-party application. The only caveat with this is that the recipient needs to install private share on their phone before they can receive the files. By default, holding the side key is gonna activate Bixby. But if you don't want that, you can change it by long pressing both the side key and the volume down key. This will bring up a menu here, and at the bottom, you'll see side key settings. Go ahead and tap that. So as you can see, press and hold is gonna wake up Bixby, but if you want, you can have it just open up your power off menu. And up on top, you also get the option to change your double press shortcut. So by default, that's gonna quick launch your camera, but you can change that to open Bixby, or open any app you have installed on your phone. And that now includes flashlight. So now, anytime I double click the side key, it's gonna turn on or off my flashlight. And it doesn't matter if my phone is locked, it's still gonna work. If you often forget to text your family and friends when it's their birthday, then you're gonna love this next feature. If you go to your messages application, then select the person you wanna send a happy birthday message to, then type in whatever message you want, then tap this arrow here, then this plus icon, you'll get a few extra options, and one of those options is schedule message. This lets you schedule that message for any time in the future. And even if their birthday is months away, you can just keep scrolling until you get to that month, 
then select the time that you want them to receive the message, then tap done. Now just double check to make sure your message says everything you want it to say, then tap this send icon, and now it's gonna hold that message until that day and time. And you can even see the day and time right here on top. So this is gonna send on June 23rd at 9.27 a.m. And you'll always know which messages haven't been sent yet because they'll be gray. And if you tap this little clock icon, then you can either send it immediately, delete it, or edit it. And editing it lets you change everything from the day and time you're gonna send it to the contents of the message as well. If you have a few favorite contacts and you never wanna miss messages from those people, you can actually just long press a conversation with that person, tap these three dots on the bottom, then tap pin to top, and their message is now gonna stay at the top. Samsung Notes now has PDF support, which makes it a lot easier to sign documents on the go, or even mark up a work PDF if you had to. All you have to do is tap this edit icon here, and tap one of these pen icons. You can select from a number of different types of pens to use, as well as change up the thickness of the pen and the color of the pen. You can then write in any notes you need, or circle things, sign things, whatever you need to do with a pen can be done very easily. Or if you wanna do some highlighting, you can do that too by tapping this highlighter tool. Then you can highlight whatever you need. If you tap the highlighter again, you can change the highlighter color, the highlighter thickness, and even change the type of highlighter. And if you made a mistake and wanna erase it, you can do that quickly just by tapping the eraser and erasing just a section of it. Or if you tap the eraser again and switch to stroke eraser, you can erase the entire stroke. And if I wanna move some of my notes around, I just grab this little lasso, grab my note, and move it to a different page. And while having an S Pen does make things a lot easier, you don't need an S Pen. If you tap these three dots in the upper right corner, you can turn on finger drawing. Now I can go ahead and use my finger to select a pen and draw with my finger instead of a stylus. When you're done marking up your page, just tap these three dots up here, tap save file as, and you can save it as a PDF file. You can even save it as a Microsoft Word or PowerPoint file, image file, text file. You get a lot of different options to work with. And if you wanna search the PDF, all you have to do is back out of the editing mode, then tap this little search icon, and you can search through the PDF just like you can in Adobe's PDF Reader. Another incredibly powerful feature that's unlocked when using an S Pen in the Samsung Notes application is the ability to hover over different parts of your handwritten notes to unlock different features. So for example, if you hover over an email address, you get an icon, and if I tap this icon, it'll automatically start an email to this address. If I hover over a phone number, I'll get a little phone icon, and if I tap that, it'll dial that number into my phone app. If I hover over a website, I get a little globe icon, and if I tap that, it'll take me to the web address. But most importantly, if I hover over an equation that ends in an equal sign, then it'll actually open up that equation in the calculator for me. Now this is especially useful for anyone that works in construction, because anytime you go to a job site and you're gonna have to take measurements to figure out how much material you'll need, all you'll have to do is write a note for each different room and the type of material, just write the dimensions in with an equal sign at the end, then just tap the calculator icon and you'll get the answer right there instead of having to type it all into the calculator and then writing your answer in separately. So this way, you have all the individual measurements and the result. Samsung's flagship devices have an incredible Bluetooth sharing feature. If I pull down the notification shade on my S21 Ultra, then go to this media tab here, you'll see that my Galaxy Buds Pro are connected to this device. If I go to the same place on my Note 20 Ultra, you'll see that this is not connected to the Galaxy Buds Pro at all. However, a little bit further down, you see a music icon called Music Share. If I tap this, then my Note 20 Ultra will search for Bluetooth devices connected to nearby Samsung devices. Since I have my S21 Ultra here, the Galaxy Buds Pro show up and it says via Eric's S21 Ultra. If I tap this, it'll request access to those earbuds through the S21 Ultra. All I have to do here is tap allow, and now I'll have full control of my Galaxy Buds Pro through my Note 20 Ultra. And to be clear, the Note 20 Ultra isn't directly connected to the Galaxy Buds Pro. It's actually connected to the S21 Ultra, which is giving it access to the Galaxy Buds Pro. This feature by itself isn't terribly powerful, but it does get a lot more powerful when you pair a second pair of wireless earbuds. So here, I have my Galaxy Buds Live, and I'll connect those just to the Note 20 Ultra. So now I have full control of both earbuds from one device, and I can even control the volume independently. This is especially useful if you're traveling with friends or family on a plane or a train, and you guys wanna watch the same movie on the same device, but with two separate pairs of earbuds.
And I also tested out the audio delay between the two devices by putting a Galaxy Bud Live in my right ear and a Galaxy Bud Pro in my left ear, and I couldn't notice any delay at all. And the same was true when watching videos. The audio was in sync with the video with both sets of earbuds. One more awesome way to use this feature is if you go to a friend's house and you want to play some music on their speakers, you can just pair to their speakers through their device instead of having to disconnect their speakers from your friend's device and then manually pair it to your device. This means you can start playing your music much faster and when you leave your friend's house, they don't have to manually pair their phone back to their speakers. So there are the top 30 unknown features. Let me know what you guys want to see next down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more deep dive videos just like this. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.